superior temporal quadrant, cooling in my mouth is a superior temporal quadrant, separate from the globe, and my tooth hypertens are to pad on T1, but hypertens on T2. The hypertens to pad on T1 and hypertens on T2. Low signal curvy nine is perky seen within it. Low signal curvy nine is perky seen within it. Diagnosis: Capillary hematoma. Small size temporal quadrant of orbit and table. Now again, this child with the right orbital mass uh, in a superior temporal quadrant, separate from the globe. Uh, MRI with hypertens on T1, hypertens on T1, and hypertens on T2. And it's low signal foci, coronary hypercarya seen within it. Diagnosis: Capillary hematoma. Question 43. 8 uh, year old boy with skin hyperpigmentation. Deteriorating vision, hearing loss, CD scan shows a large symmetrical bone degenerate in the parietal occipital white matter. In hyperintensity within the parietal occipital white matter extending across the pineal of the tropical sclerosum. Wall of MRI shows cerebral atrophy and more extensive white matter change with involvement of the frontal lobe and cerebellum. To help spastic quadriplegia, it was adrenal leukodystrophy. Cerebral atrophy, and this again adrenal um, leukodystrophy. This is called leopard skin sign, and this is called a uh, trigot pattern in metal chromatic leukodystrophy. In metal chromatic leukodystrophy, there is a uh, sparing of the subcortical blue fiber, and in you know, adrenal leukodystrophy, there is involvement of the subcortical blue fiber. So, eight year old boy with skin hyperpigmentation during vision hearing loss, which is going to large medical lesions in the parietal occipital white matter. So, okay, she is going to large uh, numerical load density in the parietal uh, occipital white matter. High intensity within the parietal occipital white matter oxygen across the premium of the carpal tunnel For uh, Follow up amyotrophic cerebral atrophy and more extensive white matter change with the involvement of the frontal lobes and cerebellum. The involvement of frontal lobes and cerebellum. Diagnosis adrenal leukodystrophy. Question number 44 Woman with air and with headache. High intensity lesion in the periventricular white matter of the uh, left parietal lobe. Seen to cross pain of the carpal callosum, diagnosed by the lymphoma. Woman with AIDS. There is a hyperintense lesion in the periventricular white matter of the left parietal lobe. Seen to cross the spinning of the carpal callosum, diagnosed by the CLF lymphoma. Another option is a PML. Focal multifocal lesion is a parallel path. PML is another option, but it is multifocal lesion. But here they are seeing only single lesion uh, in the periventricular right matter of the left parietal lobe. It's seen to cross screen of the carpal tunnel to diagnose primary signal lymphoma in air. Question 45. Mental state and metabolic abnormality. Patient has mental state and metabolic abnormality. She just shows focus of reduced attention in the pond that was osmotic myelinosis. Okay, now these are all osmotic myelinosis or central frontal myelinosis. Mental, mental state and metabolic normality. This shows a uh, focus of reduced adenation in the pons. Now, this can show the focus of reduced adenation in the pons. This can show the focus of reduced adenation in the pons. This is all MRI. But this can be seen a focus of reduced adenation in the pons. Diagnosis or osmotic uh, myelinosis. Question 46. Hypertense lesion with smooth regular wall center over the left lateral palm nucleus. Now, hypertense lesion with smooth uh, regular wall center over the left lateral palm nucleus. Hyperintense and is surrounded uh, by a hyperintense rim and hyperintense edema. Okay. So, it's surrounded by a hyperintense rim and uh, and edema. Diffusion where emitting through the diffusion diffusion diagnosis by doing absence. Now, when there's diffusion diffusion in the on the diagnosis is by doing abscess, legend or lymphoma nucleus, a small, so not called uh, real so multiform. They have a uh, rim surrounding rim also. Question 47 Suspected optic neuritis, enhancement, and mild alarm of the right optic nerve. Several months later, symbol with uh, this is from the Tox past paper, part 2 Tox. Okay. Diagnosis to metastatic variety of multiple sclerosis or diabetes. Now, in this, there is all spinal cord involvement and the brain involvement. We suspect optic neuritis, enhancement, and mild enlargement of the right optic nerve. Several months later, with swims of myelitis, spine imaging shows intramedular T2 hyperintensity and cord expansion. Spine imaging shows 
T2 imaging hyperintensity and core expansion, Pagnol Derrick syndrome, or myelitis. There are see dots and fingers seen as in multiple sclerosis, but also there is spinal cord involvement, uh, spine expansion, and high signal on T2 with imaging. So, diagnosis to uh, multiple sclerosis. Question 48 confirmed optic nerve hypoplasia and absent septum pelosum and third cerebral abnormality. Where is the third abnormality? She is in Cepali. Diagnosed is septum optic dysplasia. Where diagnosed is septum optic dysplasia. So, from the name, you can see that there is involvement of the septum pelosum and optic nerve, and also there will be she is in Cepali with it. So, optic dysplasia is also known as this syndrome is a condition characterized by optic nerve hypoplasia, absent of septum pelosum, and And hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction is also been thought uh, to be is best thought of being part of whole representative pali. Okay, so patient has developed apic nerve hypoplasia, apic nerve implosion, and also seizures of pali. Diagnosis: septal optic dysplasia. Question 49. Small right parietal arteriovenous malformation is noted. Was appropriate advice. Normally, the risk of hemorrhage is 2 to 3 percent per year, but there is no significant increase in risk during pregnancy. Requiring review after delivery to discuss treatment options. Now, usually, the patient is pregnant and there is a small right parietal uh, atrovenous malformation noted. What's appropriate advice? Normally, the risk of hemorrhage during pregnancy, we don't, do not do any intervention procedures. So, normally, the risk of hemorrhage is 2 to 3 percent per year, but there is no significant increase. So, Recommend review after delivery to discuss treatment options. Question number 50. Tonic colonic seizure. Later displacement of the internal capsule by enlarged thalami. A diffuse continuous area of hyperintensity involving the thalami coordinate and any form nucleus. The spinium of the corpus callosum and the periventricular combined matter with only minimal mass effect diagnosis. The glioblastoma, gliomatosis, cerebri. Uh, these gliomatosis, cerebri are benign tumors and also yes or no mass effect. So then, there, not okay. There's a hypertensity involving the thalami. Hypertensity involving the thalami. Okay, no, midline for the thalami. Lend you rate and then form nucleus and spin of the corpus callosum. Or you can involve the spin of the corpus callosum and periventricular white matter. So diagnosis: glioblastoma, glioblastoma cerebri. Now there's a uh, hyper high signal seen in the uh, thalami, cordial nucleus, and form nucleus, and spinal corpus callosum, and also in the periventricular pre area, white matter diagnosis, glomatosis cerebri. These are all the glomatosis cerebri. Question number 51 Suspect measles temporal sclerosis. What imaging pain would you particularly pay attention to, and what would you expect to find? No, coronal pain demonstrating volume loss and increasing in intensity of the hypochromous on T2 variant imaging. In measles temporal sclerosis, uh, what imaging plane would you uh, pay attention to and what would you find? Coronal pain demonstrating volume loss and increasing the intensity of the hippocampus on T2 variant imaging. Uh, multiple sclerosis, so empty uh, uh, fat T2. Women like this measles temporal sclerosis, so in that T2 uh, uh, temporal the uh, T2 uh, destruction of the tissue, there will be fatty change and it's high signal T2. Many temporal sclerosis, there is atrophy of both hippocampus, but there is edema also for hormone, so it will be high on T2. Question 52. Severe back pain following surgery, extensive clumps of roots of the uh, lumping of the roots of cord acquired to the right of the midline, suggesting an in surgical mass. No enhancement, diagnosis, arachnoiditis, post surgery infection. Now, this is arachnoiditis, arachnoiditis. Severe back pain following surgery, extensive clumping of roots of the cord acquired. To the right of the midline, suggesting an intrathecal mass. Clumping of the roots of the cardiacrina, diagnosis arachnoiditis. Clumping of the roots of the cardiacrina, diagnosis arachnoiditis. Post surgery. Question 53. Infant when known dwarfism, rare graft shows brachycephaly, wine suture, radiative, large cella, worm in bone, and delayed dentition. Decreased pneumatosis of the paranormal sinus and hypothyroidism, diagnosis hypothyroidism. Dwarfism plus other changes. Diagnosis hyperthyroidism. Infant with known dwarfism, 
Peter Grabso, Brack is apparently wearing suture, relatively large cella, forming bone, state, sentition, decreased pneumatization of the parental size, and hypothyroidism. There is growth failure, so diagnose hypothyroidism. Question 54. Against George Weber syndrome, 3 year old girl is here, decreased PL enhancement of variable thickness or the paracatal region of the right cerebral hemisphere. There is atrophy of the underlying cerebrum and the right cardiac plexus is enlarged. Several hyperintense foci are seen within the dry eye and adjacent white matter, forming the superior cortical veins, diagnosed George Weber syndrome. Superior cortical veins. Now, sometimes they tell you that there is cerebral atrophy and sometimes they say that there is prominent superior cortical veins, which is also seen in George Weber syndrome. There are eight tropes on the right and the right color plexus is enlarged, and also there is also seen inside this uh, calcification, diffuse chiral calcification. Question number 55. Okay, this is okay, circuit worsening headache and fractional troop. A mitral left meningeal thickening and enhancement particularly on the bell is turned. Enhancement extends across the right cell cranial nerves and around the optic nerves, and there is sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis involves left meninges and bell is disturbed. But sarcoidosis usually involves the optic nerve. It affects the eyes. It's very common to see uh, uh, sarcoidosis affect the eyes. So, here other images of sarcoidosis. In the past paper, sarcoidosis, there was a uh,